Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Old Sarge Collects. My name is Dan and today I get to share with you the cards I picked up in the merry month of May. And um, as you guys may know, I've been trying to skim down a little bit on the amount of cards that I pick up. It does not look like I did. Um, so I'm a bit of a cardaholic, I guess you could say. And uh, But anyway, let me go ahead and go through these. I feel like this is less. I do feel like this is less than what I've been picking up. Um, but I did pick up some pretty big cards too. So Anyway, let's, let me go ahead and dive into this. Now some of you may know that I have been uh, picking up and I'm trying to complete the 1952 Bowman set. So um, I was able to win a couple of Greg Morris auctions and uh, this is, I picked up a whole bunch of these 1952 tops. Um, this one is Virgil Stalkup. And then I've got Mike Garcia. And Gil Cohen. Cool horizontal card. Hank Bauer. That was a nice one. Uh, who is this? Is Sal Mag Magley? I just love the images on these uh, on this set. And who we have here? Jim Busby. And then we've got Jerry Coleman. It's a nice Yankee card. Look at the bright colors, or the, the vibrant colors, rather. West, Westrom. A catcher. Here we have Del Ennis with Philly. Beautiful card. Eddie Robinson with the White Sox. I think the artwork and the detail and the, the vibrant colors really what makes this set stand out. I also like the uh, facsimile signature on these versus the, the names in boxes. So this is Lloyd Merriman with Chicago Cubs. And we have Howie Pollitt with the Pirates. And then we also have Mickey Vernon with Washington. Uh, Billy Hitchcock with the A's. Don Colloway with the Tigers. And Paul Richards with Chicago. Uh, for Cincy, we got Luke Sewell. It's a cool card. I like that wall in the background. Uh, Hal Jeffcoat. Cool looking uh, canopy in the background there. Here we have another horizontal card. This is Del Rice. Another catcher card. Here's a neat looking card. This is another catcher card. This is Joe Astroth. Some little small detail I like about this card. Look at the guy right there. Right here, waving at the camera <laughs> while uh, Joe is posing for the picture. Pretty cool. All right, last couple of ones we got here is Bob Chipman with the Braves. And then lastly, Tommy Brown with the Phillies. And I don't know what's going on in the background there. Is he in a room? Where is he at? I, I don't know. Anyway, those are all the 52 Bowmans that I picked up. And um, let's move those out of the way. Now I want to share some trade cards with you that I picked up. So the first one is this early 1900s or maybe even earlier than that maybe maybe late 1800s this is a um, 
trade card of the Statue of Liberty, and this is by Nichols Bark and Iron, but it talks about uh, Bartholdi, the person who made the statue. Um, it talks about the island and New York Harbor, uh, that it was a gift from the, the French people to America. Just a really cool um, card that I really like. One of the earliest Statue of Liberty cards. And then on the back, just some killer advertisement. I love a good advertising. Um, and so this is for clergymen, counselors, journalists, and all persons of of sedentary habits <laughs> well whatever that means um but from reading this it sounded like an energy drink so kind of an early red bull um so that's that's pretty cool and then i was able to pick up another one of these cards this is a um arbuckles card and again it's representing um, different sports in America, so or different topics. You got baseball here, photography, bicycling, uh, circus, and um, you've got boating and fishing. Now I'll tell you, this card was um, it was mistitled, and it was titled as an Arbuckle Circus card. So I was able to pick this up on the cheap. Um, nobody else bid. On this card and so uh, I feel like I got it for a lot cheaper than what you would normally get it so now I have two and I'm gonna send them both in for grading I might end up selling one here's another Statue of Liberty card this card is from Paris France and it's from uh, the year 1900 and uh, so here's you know a depiction of uh, an American woman here and it looks like a maybe a Native American um, but you've got the Statue of Liberty here and a boat for size. So pretty neat. Here's the back of it. It is an advertisement card. And as you can see, Paris 1900. So it is dated. So that's pretty cool. Um, pretty neat image. All right. This one is an important card to me for two reasons. Number one, it's a, just a kind of a cool trade card. Um, but it's it's a trade card for the St. Louis... I'm sorry, for the Louisiana Purchase, uh, this is the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904, and in that World's Fair, they were talking about the Louisiana Purchase. Now, what's what's important is, some of you may know, I, I my side collection is Dr. Pepper stuff, and the very first time that the Dr. Pepper was, um, you know, made known uh, to the to the world was at the 1904 World's Fair. And so um, on the back here is a bunch of information. Unfortunately, it does not, to my knowledge, it does not talk about Dr. Pepper. How cool would that be? But um, either way, just knowing that, you know, Dr. Pepper made its debut here at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904. Pretty cool. Uh, so I got another Arbuckle card, and this is for another uh, bicycle card. Yeah, for some reason, I've just been kind of into this image of these high bicycles. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, um, I just picked up another one. Probably going to be the last one that I pick up, though. Um, so, and then the last thing is just a really neat um, patriotic trade card that I got. You know, 4th of July is coming up. And I'm probably going to be sharing some of my patriotic cards. So this is uh, a trade card, compliments of Mason and Hamlin, who was an organ and piano company based out of York, Pennsylvania. And this uh, picture is of the arms of the United States. And then on the back, uh, you'll see that it talks about organs and pianos. And so it's pretty cool. It even talks about Native Americans in here. Um, highest awards at all great international expositions supplied exclusively to the U.S. government for the equipment of the Indian schools and the Navy. So pretty interesting piece of history here. All right. Uh, so now let's get into the bigger cards. And uh, I'm going to share this first one is... 
another um, non-sports card. So this is a 1900s chocolate Poulon, and this is um, of, uh, what's his name, uh, De Geer. And uh, De Geer was the inventor of the photograph and the De Geer type photograph. And so this was kind of a cool picture, a cool card. And so um, I'll be sending this off probably to SGC for grading. Hopefully they will slab it up. I think they've, they've graded cards like this before. So I always write down what the card is on a sticky note so that when I go to grade it, um, I remember what it was. So um, now on to baseball. And now all of these cards here in uh, these card savers are all cards that I'm going to be sending off for grading. The first is a T206 of uh, Maddie McIntyre. I've always loved this card, and it's just a cool image. Early, you know, 1900s image of a, a awesome ball player played for Detroit. Um, this is a sweet cat back. Now, I I wanted it to be a sweet cat back for this card because the red ties into the pink on the front. So I did that on purpose. Um, I found that it's very well centered, you know, front and back. Maybe, you know, maybe a little bit top to bottom off centered, but I'm really hoping that this gets a good grade um, and it doesn't come back being altered or trimmed. So really hoping for that. Uh, so then I got a 1939 Cincinnati Reds team card of Johnny Vandermeer. And uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of uh, playing days cards. But this one in particular I really like because um, in 1938 is when he got his back-to-back no-hitters. And so uh, this is the following year. Actually, the, the card set dates 1938-1939 Cincinnati Reds cards. Uh, but I know that this was from 1939. And it says his feat of pitching two successive no-hit games has assured him of a permanent niche in baseball's Hall of Fame. His fireball is the fastest in the league and his curve the trickiest. First attracted attention by striking out 259 men at Durham in 1936. Now the greatest drawing card in the circuit. Well, we all know he didn't get into the Hall of Fame, but he still holds the record for um, having back-to-back no-hitters. So, awesome looking card. I'll be sending this in for grading it uh, also. Then I picked up um, some new cards, and man, are these cards awesome! So these are the these are the nineteen. I'm sorry, the 2023 Topps Platinum cards. This one is of Babe Ruth, and uh, this is numbered out of fifty. This is thirty-seven out of fifty. Beautiful cards. Uh, resembling those 1954 tops. And this is what the back looks like. And then I picked up a Willie Mays. This one is an orange refractor. And this is, an, this is a wave refractor. Numbered at a 25. And such a beautiful card. I don't have a lot of post-playing days cards of Willie Mays. So this one fits the bill perfectly. Just an absolutely beautiful card. And then you guys know that I collect Mel Ott. And I was able to snag this. Um, I don't know what kind of refractor this is. I forget the name of it. You know, I, I struggle with uh, identification of refractors. But anyway, this is numbered out of five. So this is really low numbered. Uh, beautiful, you know, color matching. And uh, just absolutely gorgeous. I have a couple more of these on the way. So I have a Yogi Berra. I have a Roberto Clemente. Um, just a couple of other ones that I have on the way. Now I'm going to move over to Star Wars a little bit. And I'm going to show you a couple of really cool cards. This is a 2013 Topps 75th Anniversary. And uh, this is a Star Wars card or a remake of a Star Wars card from that original 1977 set. But it's in that foil, and man, is that awesome looking. And I can't wait to see this in an SGC slab. 
oh yes, I'm not going to use one of my personal slabs for this. I'm going to be using an SGC slab for this one. Just a beautiful card. And uh, here's, here's the back of it. And now for the sexiest card I've ever seen. And that is this card of uh, Princess Leia. This is a 2010 Top Star Wars Galaxy Series 5. Card number 558. And it's titled Leia and Han. But man, is this not the most beautiful card you've ever seen. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you like Star Wars and you dig Princess Leia... Um, that's, that's a keeper. So that's going to be going, making its way to SGC as well. Now let's get into some slabbed cards. So, um, Kyle Tucker on my Houston Astros, he's doing pretty hot. Uh, and I already had some cards of his, but I really enjoy this, um, 2019 stadium club card of his. So I wanted to pick that up in the refractor version. And so I was able to do that. And by the way, this is one of my um, Pro Mag slabs. And as you can tell, I'm using the Brooks Collection label. It's a custom label that I ordered from them, but I made it to where you can write on the back because I really struggle with card identification when it comes to these newer cards. And so I'm able to hand write on the back what the card is. And that saves me time. I don't have to individually type them. Um, I don't have to, you know, wait around for the company to send me individual uh, labels. I can just have them all send uh, shipped to me, and I can hand write them. So, really awesome card of Kyle Tucker sliding into base there. And then I also picked up this. Um, what is this? A 2007 Tops E Tops cards that never were. This is card number 610 of Nolan Ryan, numbered at a 999. Here's the back of it. And here's the front. Awesome looking refractor there. Just awesome card. Love that image of Nolan Ryan on the Mets. Then I got a uh, Stadium Club Rainbow Foil of Ted Williams. This one is a 2018 Stadium Club, numbered 12 out of 25. Awesome looking image. And then lastly in these personal slabs, I have a 1950 Bowman Ferris Fane. I've always loved that image of Ferris Fane. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a piece of artwork in my opinion. So uh, here's the back of it. And I put these in a BCW... 50 Bowman uh, sleeve, if, in case you're wondering. And now for my graded card. So you guys know that May 4th was, you know, this month. And I got into a Star Wars kick. Um, and, you know, as you can tell already by some of these other cards that I picked up. Well, I also picked up some graded cards. So here is a, from the original set... Um, the 1977 Star Wars set, and uh, this is Lord Vader and a Soldier. Now, I love this card for two reasons. Uh, number one, um, you know, being a soldier myself, um, I have that tie to it. Number two, uh, Darth Vader is my favorite character in Star Wars. You know what? There's actually four ties. Number three, my favorite card in the 1977 set is of Darth Vader, and all you see is this portion of him right here. And it's like an art card, um, and it's in the yellow series. And then reason number four I love this is because my good buddy Shane sent me a, um, a, a current card of the same image, and it's like a green refractor. Um, numbered and uh, it is just an awesome card so it's a, a modern modern version of this card really cool and so yeah so that's a, that's a card I picked up this month and also because of May 4th May the 4th 
I picked up this Luke Skywalker rookie card, card number one um, in the 77 Tops set. This one in a six and a half. And I got this really cheap. So here's the back. Surprisingly cheap. All right. Now, I was doing a VR for... Um, I was doing a, a VR for Theo, Clemente Collector. And he was asking everybody to show a card that, you know, graded better than John 3D80's kid or, you know, a card that he doesn't have. Well, I'd been wanting to, to get this card. I used to have it and I wanted to put it back in my collection. And, and I used that video response or that, you know, I used uh, his challenge as a perfect opportunity for me to pick up this card again. And man, when I got on eBay and I started looking for these, I found the perfect one. And it was in a, a SGC5. Coincidentally, a half grade higher than John 3D80's kid. And it's just a beautiful card. I mean, the centering on this thing is nice. The registration on this card is nice. Um, you know, really it's only corner wear that, that gets it the 5, I think. And so, just a beautiful card all around, and a half grade higher than John's. I just wanted to say that again. A half grade higher than John 3D80's kid. So, here's the back. And I picked up a 1951 Topps uh, red back card number one of Yogi Berra in an SGC6. Here's the back. This is the first card... Um, and the very first set that Topps ever did for baseball. So really kind of an iconic card in my opinion. And it's really just one that, you know, you need to have in your collection if you're, if you're a vintage collector. Um, here is a 1951 Bowman of Phil Rizzuto. I'm not a huge fan of Phil Rizzuto, but this is probably my favorite card of his. And so I just wanted to pick this up and um, have a good clean copy of it. I only plan on having two Phil Rizzuto cards, this one and his 52 Bowman, and that's it. I'm going to stop there, so I might as well get good copies of them. Uh, so here's the back of that one. And shout out to Eric at those back pages. He and I are now clubbies on the 1911 Royal Bengals uh, Abraham Lincoln card. This is from the Heroes of History T68 set. And he's got a nice copy of this card. And now I feel like I have a nice copy too. Just a beautiful card of Abraham Lincoln. And I also have the George Washington that goes with this. So I think he and our clubbies on that one too. Here's the back. Beautiful card. Beautiful set. If you're unfamiliar. And then lastly, I picked up some of these um, 1800s H804-17 um, bluish green cards. These are trade cards from the you know, late 1800s. Now, this is one of the more difficult images to get. This is a, car, a, a set of eight cards. I already have one in my collection, and I picked up two more this month. And this one right here is probably one of the most difficult images to pick up in the set. Um, and I was lucky when I saw this one pop up on eBay. I didn't see anybody else um, going after these cards. And um, they were, you know, up for bid. And, and so I did the minimal bid and I won the bids. And, you know, I mean, I was just really happy about that because this image right here is difficult to come by. I think I've said that already more than twice. So um, now this image actually dates back to the Civil War. And if you take away the the baseball bats and some of the clothing, these two gentlemen here were depicted um, as uh, Civil War soldiers in other advertisements and trade cards. So really cool. Um, here's the back. Now something I found interesting with these two cards that I picked up are the backs. This is a, a, uh, a heater, a furnace. Um, but uh, so I've decided that I'm going to pick up these this set with all different backs and, um, and see how that turns out. 
So there's already a couple of cards that are raw on eBay. I probably won't pick them up because they're all blank back. Uh, but this one had a really cool furnace advertisement on the back. But wait till you see this next one. This what next one has an even stranger back. So this is the Send Em In card um, from the same set, that bluish green set. And the advertisement is R.A. Woolridge and Company, importers of natural guanos. That's interesting in and of itself. Natural guanos, manufacturer of high-grade super phosphates from Boston, I'm sorry, from Baltimore, Maryland. Look at the back. What the heck is going on with the back of this card? Um, kind of interesting, to say the least. One of the most interesting um, ad backs I've seen on a late 1800s card. And uh, kind of questionable, you know. So, um, anyway, um, it's just a you know advertisement card, but a very interesting advertisement card, to say the least. All right, guys, that is my pick. Those are my pickups for the month of May, the merry month of May. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and keep hunting the good stuff as I will continue hunting the good stuff in June. So take care and we'll see you soon.